The events we'll delve into in this video occurred in 2020 in the Blackburn, UK. The death of 19-year-old Aya Hashim was an arduous challenge for her family. The girl left the house to buy groceries at the nearest store and never returned home. The Hashim family immigrated to the UK from Lebanon in November 2011. Like any other parent, Aya's father Ismail wanted his children to grow up safely, receive a good education, and become worthy members of society. He has applied for asylum for himself and his family. When the Hashim family received a residence permit, they settled in Blackburn. Aya was an ambitious girl with big life plans. At the time of her death, she was a sophomore law student at Salford University. What happened to Aya was like a cruel fate joke for her parents. After all, they immigrated to England searching better and safer future. But in the end, they lost their daughter in broad daylight. On May 17, 2020, at about 3 p.m., Aya left the house and went to the supermarket close to her family's house. She did not return home, and about an hour later, a police helicopter began circling over the area. Since Aya didn't pick up her phone, her father went to find her, but the police cordoned off the street along which the girl was walking. Aya's mother searched the internet and found the news that someone shot a woman in the area where they lived. Soon after, Aya's parents heard the most terrible news any parents could learn. Their child died in the shooting. Aya was walking to the supermarket on King Street when a car drove by with several people in it. One of the people in the car fired two shots, one of which hit the girl. She was taken to the hospital in severe condition, but despite doctors' efforts, Aya died. On the same day, the police stated that the authorities did not think this incident was related to racial or religious hatred. Deputy Chief Terry Woods also asked everyone with car video recorders and surveillance cameras to report to the police if the recordings show a Toyota Avensis car or anything even remotely suspicious. My name's Terry Woods, Deputy Chief Constable of Lancashire Police. I'm on King Street at the moment and yesterday on King Street at about three o'clock, tragically, a young 19-year-old, wonderfully promising lady, Aya Hashim, was shot dead. We believe that Aya was completely innocent bystander who'd just simply gone to grab some food shopping for a family and was caught when a vehicle a Toyota Avensis, which was green, grey in colour, registration Sierra Victor 53, uniform Bravo Papa, drove past and shot two rounds, we believe two rounds. One of those rounds hit Aya. But as I said, we believe she is completely innocent bystander. Our thoughts and condolences go out to the Aya's family and friends and the community. And our commitment is that we will throw as much of our might and resources behind this investigation to bring justice for both Aya and her family. And I'd just like to make three appeals. The first one is the Toyota Eventis. If anybody's got any footage, dash cam, mobile phone, CCTV, or you even saw the vehicle yesterday, please come forward. If in the last month you've been driving around Blackburn, and you've got a dash cam, please check that footage for the last month. If you've got that Toyota Avensis, please come forward via our website and get, get us the footage. If you were here yesterday, please don't assume that we've got the information that you have. Please come forward and contact us. Later the same day, the police found the Toyota Avensis car involved in the shooting abandoned near the crime scene. Also, the police now had CCTV footage of the girl's death. Let's take a look at it. So the time is 3.03 p.m. Aya is walking down King Street. The camera that captured the moment of the girl's death is on the building of a car wash and service. Aya is walking along the sidewalk, and when she approaches this pole, the Toyota mentioned earlier drives past her. The rear side window on the left is down. The shooter makes a fatal shot. The bullet goes through and hits the pole. For ethical reasons, 
the police did not reveal footage of the girl falling to the ground. After seeing this recording, we can conclude there were at least two people in the car, the driver and the shooter. The criminals immediately left the shooting scene and abandoned the vehicle on one of the streets. Less than two hours later, the police found the car and started the search for its owner. At the same time, the forensic team began examining the vehicle in search of possible evidence. Before revealing the cause of the death of the 19-year-old girl, we should get acquainted with other people involved in this story. First of all, it's 40-year-old Pharaoh Suleiman. The man had a successful business and a loving family that lived in prosperity. He had his tire shop, which has become very popular over time. The shop brought Suleiman income that allowed for quite a comfortable life for him and his family. The man did not hesitate to put his life on public display and regularly shared with subscribers pictures in which he drives new pricey cars. How are you doing guys? My name is Faz from RI Tires. This is our first vlog. Um, and I can see obviously Sully's in the background. Get Sully in. Get Sully in. Because he gets shy. There we are. So basically we're going to start vlogging uh, our everyday life about the cars that come into our garage. We're going to be vlogging the BMW M5 2018. We got it last week, but I've just not had a chance to get this vlogging done. Um, like I said, it's not a normal vlog. We get the uh, like everyday life for RI tires. We get the customers. We're going to vlog them. Performance uh, diffuser. I know all this because I spec the. <laughs> That's why I know it. Um, have a look inside. Inside's very nice. But as people say, it is not poverty or wealth that spoils people but envy and greed. Perhaps some people envied Pharaoh Suleiman, but the cause of his problems was not someone's envy. His tire shop knew no troubles until one day a new car wash opened in the neighborhood. Its owner was Pachat Khan. Everything was fine until Khan decided to expand the range of services provided. Now his business started selling car tires, causing a conflict between Khan and Suleiman. As a result, Suleiman's business became less profitable which undoubtedly was a problem. Business neighbors started a public feud. The police were frequent guests of fights between employees of these organizations. As you have already understood, Aya was in the path of a bullet when she passed by Khan's car wash. Shortly after the girl's death, the police arrested people suspected of involvement in her death. The police carried out a large-scale operation with the participation of police officers from other countries because some of the suspects managed to leave the UK. Initially, the police charged eight people in the Aya Hashim case. These people were 32-year-old Abu Bakr Satya, 31-year-old Anthony Ennis, 35-year-old Ayaz Hussein, 26-year-old Kashif Manzoor, 29-year-old Uthman Satya, 33-year-old Zamir Raja, 28-year-old Judy Chapman, and 40-year-old Pharaoh Suleiman. Now let's return to the reason why Aya died. We can conclude that her death was accidental. She just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. After all, Pharaoh Suleiman hired a hitman to deal with his competitor Khan. Hence, the bullet that hit Aya was supposed to hit Khan, the owner of a car wash and a tire shop. Let's look closely at the recording at the moment of shooting. As you can see, Aya is a few feet from the pole. The first bullet fired didn't hit anyone. The water splashes show that it hit something next to this man. The crucial moment here is that the shooter made a mistake. The person he aimed at wasn't a business owner. During the second shot, Aya was between the shooter and this employee mistaken for Khan. The bullet hit her in the left side of the chest, passed through her, and hit the pole. The car fled the scene right away. The car wash owner, Khan, saw the girl falling to the ground. He ran up to her, trying to help and calling the emergency service. It happened, uh, basically, I saw the car, saw the gun. I saw the gun, they went fast first, and then they came back, the shoot. They're holding the gun on me, like, you know, when they came around, I said, what? And they start shooting on me. She was, yeah, she, she was just walking around. She was walking, she was going to go somewhere, I think. So you think that they were shooting at you yes. initially yeah, yeah, yeah. and then caught her instead? Aye. Responsive? Is she breathing? No, 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 she's not responsive. She's got a very weak pulse. Uh, we're just starting CPR. Okay. Come on, guys. keep going, guys. Doing well. Keep going, guys. Keep going. You should be, be able to see them in seconds. All right. 
Now let's take a closer look at which roles the participants of this crime played. Let's start with the client. When Pharaoh Suleiman started losing profits, he came up with only one solution, simply eliminating a competitor. And even though he would have been among the suspects as a person who benefited from the death of his rival Khan, he went for it. Ayaz Hussein found the perpetrators of the crime, Zamir Raja, who was the shooter, and Anthony Ennis, who was driving the Toyota that day. Another interesting fact is that the criminals drove near the car wash to inspect the area the day before the incident. Shortly before the incident, Abu Bakr Satya bought the Toyota with money provided by Suleiman. Kashif Manzoor ensured the car would work at the appointed hour by doing technical inspections and eliminating malfunctions. Uthman Satya and his girlfriend, Judy Chapman, drove the shooter and the driver in their Ford Fiesta to where the Toyota was parked and then took them away after they committed a crime and abandoned the car on one of the streets. The chronology of events that occurred that day was as follows. At 1.14 p.m., Judy Chapman and her boyfriend Uthman Satya picked up Raja and Ennis from Bolton and took them to Blackburn, where the Toyota was parked. The distance from one town to another was about 13 miles. While all four drove to Blackburn, Kashif Manzoor ensured the Toyota was in order. The car was a couple of miles from the car wash. As for Suleiman, he took a front row seat, walking in front of his service station to see everything that would happen personally. However, the Toyota wouldn't start because of the dead battery. So Manzoor had to connect the dead battery to another car's battery using wires. Next, Manzoor handed over the vehicle to Raja and Ennis and returned to the service station. Here you can see how the Toyota appears around the corner with the window down. Ennis and Raja drove past the car wash several times, choosing the right moment. They needed to be on the same side of the street as Khan's car wash. Next, we see how Manzoor and Suleiman are watching the development of events. During the fourth drive past the car wash, Toyota slowed down. Khan, the target, was on the street at that moment. He saw the shooter, Zamir Raja, making a mistake and firing the first shot at another employee. Fortunately, he missed. The second bullet, as we now know, hit Aya. After that, Raja and Ennis left the scene, abandoned their car, and got into the car with Judy Chapman and Uthman Satya, who drove them away from Blackburn. By 5 p.m., the police found the abandoned car of the criminals. Even before they found the Toyota, the police, who had no idea who was behind the shooting, came to Suleiman's tire shop to analyze the surveillance footage. When the policeman was reviewing the video, Ayaz Hussein, who, let me remind you, found the crime perpetrators, came into the shop. Suleiman points to the door, and everyone aware of the incident leaves the room and goes to the second floor. The topic of their discussion is unknown. Thank you.
Further, we see the police continue to watch the video from the surveillance camera, and Abu Bakr Satya, who bought the Toyota, is sitting behind them. At that moment, he heard someone on the police radio saying they had found the criminal's car. Within a second, Satya gets up and goes to Suleiman to discuss something with him. Nine days after Aya's death, Zamir Raja, the shooter, flew to Portugal. At Lisbon Airport, he met Anthony Ennis, the Toyota driver. The latter fled the country too. The client, Pharaoh Suleiman, was arrested the day after Aya's death on May 18th. Abu Bakr Satya was arrested a day later on May 19th. Judy Chapman and Uthman Satya, May 20th. Ayaz Hussein and Kashif Manzoor, May 21st. Zamir Raja, who hoped to return to England unnoticed, was arrested at a train station in London on June 6th. Anthony Ennis was apprehended in Spain on July 4th, after which they extradited him to the UK. All the suspects received charges for taking the life of Aya Hashim and conspiracy to take the life of Khan, the owner of the car wash. All of them, undoubtedly, started denying their guilt, but their silence did not last long. Soon, trying to downplay their role in the crime, the suspects testified against each other. No one wanted to spend the rest of their lives behind bars. Therefore, the police found out even the tiniest details. The announcement of the verdicts was on August 5, 2021. Pharaoh Suleiman was sentenced to life imprisonment with a minimum term of 34 years. It means he will be eligible for parole after 34 years. However, this is not his first prison sentence. In 2001, Suleiman was involved in a hit and run that killed a 67-year-old man. He fled the scene, abandoning his car, and later claimed that someone had stolen it. But this did not help him. Suleiman spent three and a half years behind bars. The shooter, Raja, received the same sentence as Faraz, life imprisonment with a minimum term of 34 years. He agreed to play his part in this crime for 1,500 pounds. The driver, Anthony Ennis, was sentenced to life in prison with a minimum term of 33 years. Ayaz Hussein, who found the crime perpetrators, was sentenced to life imprisonment with a minimum term of 32 years. Abu Bakr Satya, who bought the Toyota Avensis, was sentenced to life imprisonment with a minimum term of 28 years. Uthman Satya, who organized the transportation of the shooter and the driver, was sentenced to life imprisonment with a minimum term of 28 years. Kashif Manzoor, responsible for keeping the car in working condition that day, was sentenced to life imprisonment with a minimum term of 27 years. Announcing the verdict, the judge said, none of you seven showed any remorse in the aftermath of the shooting. Together you tried to lie, scheme, and plot your way out of trouble. It was not long before you all started to sacrifice your co-defendants in an attempt to save your own skins. In October, 2021, Judy Chapman, who drove the Ford Fiesta, was found guilty of involuntary deprivation of life of Aya Hashim. She received a 15 years prison sentence. However, that's not all. After analyzing the correspondence of all the people convicted in this case, the investigators learned that other people were involved in this crime. On May 5th, 2023, 42 year old Louis Otway from Manchester got sentenced to life imprisonment with a minimum term of 32 years. During the trial, the investigation proved that Otway became a link between Ayaz Hussein, Zamir Raja, and Anthony Ennis. In other words, he helped Hussein find the crime's perpetrators. Moreover, there was another woman involved in this case. Callie Bainbridge became the last of 10 convicts. Prosecutors said that on the day of the crime, Callie Bainbridge went to Bolton to meet with Zamir Raja and Anthony Ennis to take their mobile phones from them which they turned off. She then drove back to Trafford and turned the phones on. Ennis's phone came back to life in Partington, where he lived. Bainbridge then went to Sale, where she turned Raja's phone on. Lancashire police said Bainbridge did this to create the false impression that Raja and Ennis were in Greater Manchester and not in Blackburn at the time of the shooting. Thus, she provided them with a false alibi. 
Bainbridge, 32, pleaded guilty to conspiracy to pervert the course of justice. On August 11, 2023, she was imprisoned for 23 months and became the last person sentenced in the Aya Hashim case. Salford University, where Aya studied, decided to give her diploma to her parents. The ceremony took place in November 2021. As her family said, Aya dreamed of becoming a lawyer.